So here's my pipeline to implement a slack slash command. Um, before we step through it, I'll show you it in action and uh, see what the user experience is like from Slack. So here I have um, the Slack message box and I can say slash stock and then I have a stock number, a valid stock number handy and uh, hit enter and uh, it looks up the stock item and tells me that stock item 25276002 is an aerody aerodynamic steel hat. And um, I can do things like uh, I can say slash stock, and then if I just uh, put an invalid number in, then it's going to tell me uh, it can't find the stock item. Are you sure it's a valid stock item number? So that's in action. And um, I show the, I walk through this in detail in the uh, blog entry. I'm just going to show you the real highlights here. So we receive the um, REST request from Slack in this endpoint. So I've configured the um, IP address, actually the IP address for my house. <laughs> this is running on my laptop at home. Um, and I've set up the routing so that uh, this gets uh, messages from the internet, uh, which I'll take down as soon as I finish this. Um, and then one of the most interesting bits is here. So you'll notice most of this pipeline is off the shelf processors. I do have a little bit of script here because uh, Slack has a particular way of signing the incoming request. So good practice is to uh, not have secrets in your code. You share code by email, you put it on GitHub, you don't want those credentials there. So I've externalized that into a uh, runtime parameter in the pipeline. And then what I'm doing is I'm really just implementing that uh, Slack signing algorithm in Python and setting an attribute to say whether or not the signature is uh, valid. And then if the signature is valid, if that attribute is true, then I pass those form parameters. And here's another interesting bit. I'm using this split KV um, expression language function, and that's going to take the uh, value of the root record. So I'm just reading in text with the uh, rest endpoint, and it's going to split it on uh, ampersand to split into uh, separate key value pairs and then split each key value pair on equals. So that'll basically give us a list of key value pairs for our um, HTTP form submission. And then I set uh, the item number um, field to a URL decode on the text, uh, the value of the t that's against the text entry in that uh, key value map. And I do URL decode because, of course, um, form parameters are URL encoded. And then very simple here, I simply look up uh, the stock item from its number, select item name from stock item, where the item number equals that in the record that we just set. And then if the part exists, so if there's a value in that item name, I create the response message. So here's another interesting thing. I'm uh, creating the structure that S Slack wants to see. Um, so I'm saying, okay, here's the text to show the user. And you can see here I'm substituting in values from the record, so the item number and item name. Uh, it wants to see this response type set to the literal string ephemeral. And then I'm building this structure for the attachments, and we'll see how that turns out in a moment. I remove everything except for the fields that uh, Slack wants to see. And then the whole the whole record goes back to Slack with a 200 OK. Now, uh, I can show you what actually goes back to Slack. I've got a little uh, Python test program. What I'm going to do first is, though, set to, uh, to capture a snapshot here. So we'll say capture a new snapshot. And what that does is when I send in a request, uh, let's make it a valid request, shall we? So you can see the payload here that uh, is returned to Slack. So Slack sends us that form request. It gets back this JSON, gets uh, displayed to the user. And over here, I can now view the snapshot and see exactly how that went through the system. So I can see that this is the incoming message with this great long string that's their form post. Um, 
I can see that the uh, signature valid is true. Okay, so that all checks out. And then uh, I can see the parsed form parameters here. So you'll see that that great long string here in the input record is parsed into a beautiful uh, list of key value pairs. And uh, so there's the new text, <coughs> which is the part number I typed in. And then the item number is just the same as that since there's no uh, encoding going on there. And then again, I can see the item names being set. And then we can see that the record follows the stream one because the item does exist. And then we can see the uh, response message being created here. So text is changed from just the item number to the message we want to show. And this whole hierarchy is built up of uh, the URL and the button we want to show the user. And then a bunch of the fields get uh, removed. You see them all uh, highlighted on the left there. They're no longer there. And then the whole thing is sent back uh, in the HTTP response. So uh, really useful feature um, uh, snapshot. And in fact, I can take another snapshot uh, if we do here. And we can do the other case where maybe um, it's a non-existent stock item, so can't find a stock item. And really nice feature of snapshots is that we can kind of trace this through and see where uh, things went wrong. So if we look up the stock item, oh, there's no record on the positive path. We can see here that, uh, in fact, uh, item number's there, but item name uh, is not. So there you have it. Implementing a Slack slash command as a data flow pipeline. Really uh, very, very simple. And uh, if you want to do the same, then um, the code is all in the blog post. Thanks for watching.